all going so very, very well. Deathwing Dragon Lord, what could go wrong? Oh, Mirror Entity, of course. Yeah, Mirror Entity. I played into that like a fool. Uh, I could have played a uh, taunt um, and given him a, 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 a taunt there. That would have stopped me from taking so much damage to my face and would have perhaps have given me a chance of winning the game. Instead, we give him Deathwing Dragon Lord. But I still have a chance of winning because I have two taunts in hand. If I can kill off my Deathwing, I can get those taunts on board and then maybe win the game. So the idea here was to go face, to do some damage, and then to brawl, and to get two taunts on the board. Unfortunately for me, I played into Counterspell. So I played into Mirror Entity, I played into Counterspell, like a fool, I deserve to lose this game. Can't believe that happened. Can't believe I fell for both Mirror Entity and Counterspell. But for every game you lose, there are hopefully a couple of games that you win. And um, this is one good example of, of a game that, well, initially it was looking bad. I mean, this guy had Spirit Singer Umbra on board. And you never want to leave her alive. At least I think it's her. Because they do things like this. They play Void Lord. And then you have a wall of taunts that you now have to get through. Well, for once, the Lich King gave me a spell that was useful. Yeah, I tend to not have very good luck with the Lich King. I tend to get useless spells that don't do anything in a given context or situation. So now, we're forcing the Warlock to react to this board. There is a Deathwing there. There is a Lich King present. How do you deal with this? Well, this is Q-Block. And whilst it's not turn 10, so he doesn't have access to Gul'dan, a Void Lord is still a pretty big roadblock. But we can get through it. In fact, we have Lethal here. It's just a case of doing the calculations. Doing the calculations again. Doing them for a third time because you need to be absolutely sure that you've got lethal. Um, and then there's probably, maybe there was more than one way here to, to, to get the lethal. I don't know. But um, yeah, this worked out pretty well for me in the end. And that feels really, really good. Taking down essentially what is deemed to be a tier 1 meta deck. So. There's the win streak bonus. What deck are we playing today? Well, today we are playing Keebler's Dragon Recruit Warrior. So recently I've developed a taste for playing decks with big minions. You know, I've played Big Rogue, Big Hunter. I mean, everyone's played Big Priest, right? If you can afford the legendaries. Um, I find big decks fun to play and you may as well call this big warrior because the uh, you know the size of the threats that are played in this deck but yeah I guess calling it dragon recruit warrior is more apt I mean it's got dragons in it right and everyone loves playing dragons so how does a deck work you want to control the board early you have the likes of blood razor which is a really good weapon I guess it's coming to its own as kind of a replacement for fiery war axe but it, you can only play it on turn 4, so it's not as good, obviously. But it's especially good against Paladin decks, uh, especially Dude Paladin or Aggro Paladin with 1 health minions. Um, it's especially good. So, control the board early, uh, you've got Sleep of the Fishes, you've got um, Forge of Souls, interesting to draw weapons, Whirlwind Effects, Shield Slams, Shield Blocks, yep, control that board, and then you build towards Brawl for even more control of the board. Now, turn 6, of course, is where it really gets fun. Gather your party, will recruit a minion and put it on the board. Hopefully you get something impactful like the Lich King, which is a taunt. Um, if you're facing aggro, Sleepy Dragon is a really good minion to get out on turn 6. They really struggle to get through the health uh, of the taunt. 
Um, yes, Sarah being recruited onto the board can be a very good thing too, because, you know, if she comes down early enough and she can't be dealt with, several turns of getting good quality dream cards, i.e. not laughing sister, can be an absolute blessing. So you sequence your way into the late game. Maybe you play Dragon Hatcher and you put some more dragons on the board. Maybe you get yourself into Yashraj turns where he just summons one big threat after another. Um, so yeah, the deck is interesting, and if you can get uh, if you can get Yashraj or Yasera out or the Lich King out from gather your party, uh, then the value chain that, that uh, follows can be very very difficult for your opponent to overcome. So let's have a look at this deck in action on the standard mode ladder. Okay, so we're starting out against a paladin. Now, the chances are it's some kind of aggro paladin, uh, you know, dude paladin, murloc paladin, whatever you want to call it, it's going to be aggressive. This deck is equipped to deal with that aggression. I kept the shield block, um, I, I don't know why, I, I feel safer with shield block against, uh, against aggressive decks. Sometimes just being able to buy yourself a little bit of extra health and draw a card at the same time is pretty useful. Now, seeing that taunt in our hand early is not a good thing. It's too early, way too early. But seeing a whirlwind effect is pretty good. Uh, and execute could be useful against, I don't know, a knife juggler? Yes, executing a knife juggler I think is a relevant play. Um, but there will be a couple of high health big threats that he plays, maybe like Sunkeeper Tarim for example. So Execute does have uh, some value against a couple of big threats. Righteous Protector is the expected start for this Paladin. Pretty good for him. I've got nothing else to do except armor up and wait. And there is a lot of waiting with this deck sometimes. You've got nothing to do for several turns. Just armor up, pass. Armor up, pass. Rinse and repeat. And I'm shield blocking here for the card draw. Um, you know, the, the armor gain is somewhat inconsequential here. I don't have a shield slam in hand. So, the card draw was useful, certainly. So the Paladin pushing a bit of early aggression here. He hasn't developed a substantial board yet. So I may want to hold off with my weapon. But actually, I think equipping it now is useful. I'm just removing what I can. And I know now on my next weapon swing that his uh, direwolf alpha is going to die. No more take candles. Reporting for duty. Now, in fact, you know, his whole board would die, but um, I'm going to be a bit more selective now about when I swing with this weapon. I'm essentially saying that I can take a little bit more damage to my face before I start to panic and worry, so I'm challenging him to put more stuff down on the board. So, will he comply with my request? Will he fill the board here? I think it's unlikely. Yeah, he's just hero powering. Oh, and coining something out too. Oh wow, okay. Stegadon. And now my hopes and dreams of uh, clearing board have just vanished. Okay. Fair play to him. Oh, that just changes everything. <laughs> that just changes everything. Yeah, we can actually hit face here. And uh, Sleep with the Fishers will now be a board clear. And I think it's worth clearing this board. And we can even fit in an armor up. Okay. So at some point, we're gonna need to play. Um, we need. To, we're gonna need to get a substantial minion down on that board. Um, but we're just spending our turns reacting to everything that he's doing, and trying to clear his board rather than develop my board. But this changes everything. 
guess. Gather your party on turn 6 would have been ideal, but no, we did it on turn 7, so it's still fine. And we get a 12-12. It now becomes a 3-3. And that is now dead. <laughs> what a way for Deathwing to, to die, to go, as a 3-3. And uh, just like that, the Paladin refills the board. Very annoying. And uh, I'm actually resorting to killing 1-1s one here with my weapon. That is not the dragon that we want on the board at this juncture in time. Unfortunately for us, uh, there are four dragons in our hand. So... They're just going to have to be played naturally from our hand. It would have been nice to have summoned um, a dragon-based taunt with the weapon. But as I say, both of those taunts are in our hand. It's very unfortunate. Because when you're leaving your face exposed to the paladin that's got four recruits on board, and those recruits get buffed up, you know that you're opening yourself up to a world of pain and trouble. Reporting for duty. Now, if I could draw some other kind of whirlwind effect here, that'd be really good. Mm. So we definitely... We need to get a taunt down, right? And I've given up on the strategy of killing dudes. I'm just going face. So, two taunts on board now. I mean, for him, it's... Perhaps not going to be all too difficult to, to, to bust through. If he can get the other Stegodon down and he can get the poison effect, then we probably lose the game. The battle is oh, wow! That was interesting. Um, then he thought that he couldn't break his way through. Maybe he just didn't draw the Stegodon. Okay, let's look at one final game. Um, and I'm keeping, I'm keeping Slam, it's useful, it's card draw, uh, it enables Execute. And I'm keeping Shield Block too, again, I value the card draw, I think in this game that's pretty important. Um, you're looking for ways to get big minions out onto the board early. We have Gather Your Party, or one copy of it, it would be nice to find the second copy. Um, maybe in this matchup. Maybe keeping the shield block wasn't correct. Uh, against the Agra Paladin, I think it had value, because that armor game can get you out of trouble, it, it can stop you from dying. But this matchup against what appears to be a Q block, it's a slightly slower matchup. Oh, it's not Q block. Okay, it's Zulok. Okay, I take back what I said. That shield block's actually useful here, because we have a shield slab in hand. And we have to get rid of that councilman. It can't be allowed uh, to, to, to live. It will just buff itself up and then do ridiculous amounts of damage. Okay, so shield block, shield slam. Hey, it worked out for us. It worked out for us. And we're slowly building our way towards turn six with Gavi party. So all in all, this looks pretty good for me at the moment. Interesting. So, I saw the councilman and I assumed it was Zulok. I guess we can change our labelling of his deck and maybe call it Demon Lock because uh, those buffs are usually pretty good on demons. Um, hmm. Blood Imp? Okay, interesting. A friend of mine um, is very, very high on Blood Imp and says that it's a really, really good card. That if it can't be dealt with, uh, it could start buffing the health of your minions and that can get out of control real quick. Ooh, Soulfire discards Soulfire. Interesting. He plays Blood Imp, wow. So this is some kind of a demon lock 
very interesting. Well, that's protecting my face. That's pretty good. Your magic shall not sing. Silencing it doesn't do a huge amount because my health total is still relatively decent. We can afford to take a bit of face damage here. Look at that blood him. Doing so much work there. We need to get rid of it. And now we are in control of this game. Health total is still reasonable. I'd be curious to see if he plays Doom Guards in this deck with cubes and dark packs. Warriors of the frozen no. ways. Plays a Lich King. Interesting. Uh, killing that's going to be a little bit awkward here. I have to invest quite a bit. I have a slam control card, I guess. What are we looking for here? Brawl is decent, but just not what we need at the moment. So we're going to have to tank this. That's really, really painful. But, on a positive note, we've killed both Blood Imps. I mean, that's an achievement in itself, right? That's an achievement in itself. And now we just have this steady stream of big minions, big threats that are going to be coming down onto the board. From a value standpoint, we are certainly superior to him now. From a, uh, from a value standpoint with minions, we're certainly superior to him. His ability to go very wide on the board, though, may be uh, an issue. I wouldn't call that going wide on the board. It's just two minions. We don't have lethal here. Um... Training, yeah, training was definitely sensible. Definitely sensible due to the potential for a science effect. However, we have lethal next turn, right? He needs some way to defend himself here against Deathwing. So many possibilities. I'm not sure what he's thinking about. But I don't want him to concede, which is why I'm hovering over his minions, implying that I'm doing some kind of minion calculation, some kind of trade calculation here. Yeah, don't concede. I'm gonna I'm gonna trade with your board. Because I want this game to go on. Please don't concede. Okay, good. I'm just going to trade casually here. Look at that board. All the dragons. And, um... Yeah, I'm just going to trade again. And just add the Lich King. Because we can. Now, if he would just play some minions, I'll trade into them. I promise. Won't kill him. Just keep this game going. See how many dream cards I can get my hands on. So tap into Twisting oh, Nether. No. Okay, so it very much is a demon lock that we've been facing here. 
But this is the power of the Dragon Recruit Warrior. Once those dragons and those big taunts come down on board, there's very little your opponent can often do to uh, to fight their way through unless they run multiple silence effects. So, Kibler's Dragon Recruit Warrior. Very, very effective. Um, I believe I've got like a 65% win rate with this deck at the moment. So, I think it's decent. Warrior generally is not in a great place on the ladder. Um, you know, Warrior is seen as it one of the weaker, one of the weaker classes at the moment. Um, and of course everyone's playing tier 1 decks like Dude Paladin, Q-Block. So if you can find a way to make Warrior work, then yeah, it's absolutely worth giving it a shot because of course nobody really expects to see much Warrior on the ladder. And so you do have the element of surprise. And this is certainly not a deck that people expect to see. So, you know, people start... So people start making strange plays because they don't know what you're doing. Um, and especially at the early stage of the ladder, so sort of rank 15 down to rank 10. Um, I'd imagine that some of the players at that level probably haven't seen some of these cards before. I mean, gather your party? Really? I mean, who plays that is what they would be thinking. So, yeah, fun deck, effective. Not always terribly consistent though, sometimes you just end up with Yashraj and Double Deathwing in your opening hand, and then you don't draw any of your removal or any of your weapons, and then you just go aggro down. Um, but if you can get the Blood Razor out against aggro, if you can get Brawl out, and then if you can sequence into Gather Your Party on turn 6, then you stand a very good chance of winning games against aggro, particularly if Sleepy Dragon or the Lich King uh, come down as a result because hey big fat taunts in the way of aggressive decks uh, pretty much means that if they don't run silence effects or they don't have access to silence in their hand at that time then they can't get through and you win the game it's that simple so thank you very much for joining me everyone had a lot of fun producing this video and uh, whilst we're waiting for the next hearthstone expansion to be released i'm going to continue playing some fun standard mode decks um, as we draw closer to the expansion i will be doing a giveaway uh where you guys can win some packs for the new expansion so look out for details of that giveaway uh in the weeks ahead so, thanks once again for joining me. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, and I'll see you guys all again very soon for more Standard Mode fun.